Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to be covering how we can start adding in some of the more smaller, more uh, fine detail in this mesh. Still big scale ones, but making sure that we get everything all kind of figured out. Now, first off, I do want to make sure that these proportions work properly here. So for example, you'll notice that this top section here for the chest does not quite line up with the concept. The concept does seem to insinuate that some of these things line up. And so we do want to make sure that that is the case here as well. Uh, and what I will do is just turn off this shell modifier as well for this mesh, because I do want to make sure that what I'm grabbing is also going to be both parts, because what I want to do is take this mesh and add in this one to it as well. That way, when I edit both of these pieces, they're going to be edited together as I just kind of pull this out just a little bit more so that these two pieces here line up nice and cleanly. Uh, now I'm going to isolate this as well, just so I can see what I'm working with, uh, with good detail. I'm going to inset this just a little bit here, just maybe to about this point, just so that it's going to kind of line up on the inside there nicely. That'll work out pretty well. And what I am going to do now is just take all of these outside edges, and these ones as well, just press Control-1 and just start to pull these up. Now I may miss a few, so that's fine. Can just go back into this mode here, control select, and then press control one again to create a loop. Just kind of pull this up just to kind of see that I'm getting all the edges that I need. If I'm not getting this part right now, it actually doesn't matter. I'm going to use a symmetry anyways, but if I wanted to get it, I could just deselect this and pull that whole section up. Now, apparently in here, I'm grabbing a little bit too much. That's fine. Just deselect and pull this up. There we go. That will work nicely because we'll start to get this little tapering that's going on here which will show up really well for some of that shape. Keep in mind, of course, it's not necessarily going to show up perfectly here, but it won't keep that edge looking so uh, connected to the bottom here. It'll just give a little bit more of a, uh, a transfer of shape. And if the camera angle changes at any point, uh, we can, of course, work with that there. If you're not sure about what a concept is doing, uh, and you've got a concept artist with you on your team or anything like that, just feel free to ask them what that shape is supposed to be, and if you're replicating it the way that you were intending to. I'm just going to select this mesh, just click a few times to get the mesh that you actually want. It is this one, there we go. And just detach it, and we're going to detach without any of these selections, which will make it a new object, which means it can have its own settings, uh, such as symmetries uh, and all that. There we go. So this symmetry is just off. We just align it back up with the mesh. And at this point, too, we can just say center on object as well, which will mean next time our symmetry goes in, the symmetry will exist exactly where it's supposed to be, like right here, right now. And we'll add in that shell modifier again, and it is actually going to go with the default settings that it had before, which is handy for us. It'll work well for now. So now that we've got this all working the way that we want, we do want to add in this extra little edge through the center here, which looks really compelling. But how are we going to get that here? So for example, we want to use this edge that shows up here. So we'll go to editable poly, start to edit this, but you'll notice that edge is actually not here. Now we could try to add it in ourselves with a connect, but it's off. It's not where it's supposed to be. So all we need to do is just collapse our symmetry in. We can just center on our object again, just to make sure it's all exactly where it's supposed to be. And at this point, you can see we've actually got the edge already set up for us. So just click, do a loop, and we can just chamfer this a little bit here. So that works pretty well. We're going to do a swift loop just to kind of connect a point up here so that we've got a reasonable spot to create that little uh, edge change that shows up right there. So in here, let's just get that spot. There we go. And we can scale it out until it matches up with the shape of this. That's exactly what we want in this case. That'll work nicely. Let's just maybe pull it out a little bit more. It's nice to have it match up with existing shapes in here. And that should work pretty decently. So now what we can do is either extrude this inwards, or I'm just holding shift to sort of select that whole ring. Uh, now I could extrude this in. So let's just use our options here for extrude. We don't want it to use group in this case. We want it to use uh, local normal, which will push it all inwards. Now we could use that uh, in here, or we could use the sort of opposite effect out here. 
and have it actually push out from the rest of the surface. Uh, which way you go with this is totally up to you, um, but in this case, I'm going to just kind of push this in. I think that'll be the right choice uh, for now. And again, these settings are all remembered, so local normal is remembered. Uh, I don't have to pull up the dialog in this case, and I can just kind of push that in. So that'll work pretty decently. I want to just grab this edge as well and use my... Let's just make sure I'm getting everything selected properly here. And I'm just going to drag this over a little bit uh, so it creates a better taper. And I may do the same here as well just to make sure that that taper looks consistent this whole way through. That'll be good. Could create more shape here, but for now I think this will work well and look appropriate for the shape that we're, we're working with. So that's decent. Now what we want to do is create those little triangle bits that you're seeing here. So in this case, I could reuse anything that I've got already modeled, uh, especially when it's maintaining the existing shape. So let's pull that over here. Let's take this section, let's just clone to element. I think that'll be fine. Actually, in this case, let's uh, detach that. Instead, we want this to be a separate object. Let's just select everything there. Alt select anything we don't want. There we go. So now in this case, I can just kind of push this over a little bit more. I think that should work pretty good. If you want it to come out of the surface just a little bit so we can see it, you can use a push modifier, which is a handy little modifier which just kind of pushes your shapes along their normal, so along the direction of the existing surface. And that works out pretty decent. So I'm just going to grab both these edges, kind of pull them in a little bit here, so that I've got something manageable to work with. Let's pull this over. And now I'm going to use the cut tool to kind of just connect over to this point and to this point. It's basically all I need to do. Sometimes I just like to build off of the existing surface so that I've got something to work with. I'm going to use my snaps to kind of snap this vertice over to this one. So I've got the shape that I want. That's pretty decent. And now I'm just going to make sure that I use that symmetry again. So uh, in this case, I'm going to affect my pivot, align it to this object so that it's in the existing object's pivot point, just to keep that all consistent, so that when I drop down any kind of symmetries, I'll just flip, it's going to give me the exact kind of position that I want, and I'll drop down another symmetry on the y-axis. So this one looks like it's off just a little bit, it's not a big deal, just pull this back over. The back and front of this chest should be the same, and if they're not right now, then we can just make sure that our symmetry is doing that. So again, we'll just drop back in here, Check this one out and say symmetry on y-axis. So that's not quite doing what we wanted. Ah, and that would just be because of this piece. So let's just detach that for now. We don't really need it. Let's detach and take this part and re-center our pivot and do another symmetry on the y-axis. That'll work better for us here now. Let's delete this one. Let's adjust. It's always good to have your pivots actually set up where you want them to be so that everything kind of lines up and always does what you want it to do on the first try. So now we'll just do this again on the y-axis and we've got that shape that we want. So that works out decently. You can see here the shape does go up quite a bit more than what we're seeing here, so let's just adjust some more. Again, all of these kinds of things are worth making sure are correct because you do want that stuff to look the way it's supposed to. Now we are getting a fair amount of bending here, as you can see this section's bending towards the inside, and it really shouldn't be. So I may remove this, because it's not quite creating what I wanted. And we can just try extruding instead. So let's just take all of these pieces here. Let's just select all that. And we'll extrude, because sometimes that can create a bit of a better shape than what we were getting before. And we're going to do it by a group this time. Unlike before, because if I do by local normal, we'll still probably get most of that bending. Yeah, it still seems to be showing up in here. But if we do it as a group, not as by polygon, then we can kind of just push it all up and out, which will be what we want in this case. And then we can potentially kind of just pull it back in a little bit, maybe even scale it out, just to kind of create some of that shape that we want here, but still maintaining nice, clean edges. And if at any point you're not sure if those edges are clean, just delete them. As you can see here, there was a little bit of a bend, not a big deal, just delete it. And then you could still add these extra edges back in as you need to. Let's just make sure that there's no extra edges there, kind of messing up that shape. That works well for us now. 
So that's nice and clean and I could still just kind of cut edges back in with my cut tool, Alt C, if I wanted to keep this geometry uh, a little bit cleaner in this case. Or let's just go right here. Let's just make sure we're connecting properly. There we go. So now that comes out really nice and clean and seems to go at the distance that it's supposed to as well, which is really important for us. And again, if you need to adjust any further pieces like that, you can kind of push certain sections out a little bit more and we can come back to our symmetry. Let's go affect our pivot, align it to the rest of the model just to keep this all clean and easy to work with. And we'll just turn on another symmetry, flip this out. That'll work nicely and just come through here for this last little part just to kind of taper this in because tapers very consistently when it comes to models that are viewed from far away are going to show up and read a lot better than small little uh, angular shapes that are uh, 90 degree angles and things like that so let's just snap this back up here we can pull some of these edges out too if we start to see that they're maybe not going where we want them to let's turn off that push as well I don't think we need it in this case and let's pull this down a little bit as well. That starts to work really well. And this starts to look really interesting from above as well, which is really important for us. So at this point, we want to start trying to figure out some of the smaller details here, because we've got most of this figured out. All the basic structure is here. This thing looks the way it's supposed to. It looks like the concept and everything's working out pretty well for us. So the things we want to start doing is figuring out some more of the really fine scale detail of this mesh, which we're going to do in our next module.